Hi everybody, welcome back to Finca del Cielo. Now today I thought I would talk to you about what sort of care orange trees need and the problems that they can have. But some of these things they apply to pretty much all fruit trees so hopefully there'll be some useful hints and tips for you today. When we moved here just over two years ago we knew nothing at all about trees. So of course we bought a Finca with 97 trees on it which meant it's been a bit of a baptism of fire. We are still a long, long way from being experts, but we have picked up some really good ideas and some knowledge along the way. So I'm standing by one of our orange trees. Let me just turn you around. So if I just come out a little bit, you can see the size of one of these trees. First thing you'll notice is that actually it's not too tall. Um, there is absolutely no point growing fruit 30 foot up in the air where you're never going to be able to get it. So we learned that one fairly quickly. Um, secondly, the really important thing with fruit trees is they need sun and they need water. So the saying here in Spain is a bird should be able to fly through the tree. So you cut the middle out so that the tree can get plenty of sunshine and it will give you lovely, great big juicy fruit. So you can see here in the middle of this tree, how the centre is cut out so that the light can get all the way through the tree. And this year we did do a really big prune on the trees. So we actually thinned everything out. You can see the sky through the trees. Um, and apart from the fact that that makes it look absolutely gorgeous in the morning when the sun rises, uh, it does actually make for very good healthy trees. So what problems do orange trees in particular have? Well, they can be quite fickle. They are prone to pests and diseases. And the thing that we found the hardest to learn was we would see a problem on a tree and look it up online and go, oh, I've got leaf curl. And then there's about five different reasons why leaves might curl on a tree. It could be water stress. So that could be too much water, too little water. It could be pests or it could be a disease, a fungal disease. So then you go, well, how do I know? Am I giving it too much water or not enough water? So we've learned now to look closely at the trees and look for more clues. So for example, I'm just gonna show you here. Can you see this leaf is curling? Now this is actually a water shoot, this is bad. We don't want these water shoots growing in the middle of the tree. They will take all of the water instead of it going to uh, the fruit. So all we do, sorry if I'm jiggling you around a little bit, um, we would just come through and just take these off. And this is something that is ongoing throughout the course of the year. So I've started now. This is the terrible thing about orange trees is you start to see things that need doing. And before you know it, you've been standing at that tree for an hour. So water shoots, important to get rid of those. And you can see already that's let even more light in. So pruning as well during the year, there is no specific time for pruning orange trees. It's a case of doing what needs doing to them when they need it. So throughout the year, we'll be cutting away dead wood. Usually then, just after we've harvested is when we would go around and do a serious cut, when we might get the chainsaw out, take off some of the larger branches to make sure that there's light coming in. So what other problems do they have? Uh, pests. Uh, this year has been the bane of my life. We have actually had a bit of an infestation of, of scale insects this year. I'm just going to show you uh, what a scale insect looks like. There we go. Can you see those little white things on the branch there? Um, now these, they look fairly harmless, but uh, they feed on the tree and they leave behind a sooty mould and eventually, if left long enough, they will kill the tree. So it's important to act on these things. Now, the insecticide that we use here is uh, horticultural oil. It's an environmentally friendly one. The downside of it is it's a contact spray, not a systemic spray. So the insects will only die if you actually spray them. And as you probably saw there, these uh, scale insects are very good at hiding in nooks and crevices. So the trees do get uh, a really good spray. They're absolutely dripping when I finish spraying, which I actually did this morning. 
Um, and at the moment we're doing that regularly until we've got rid of this scale problem. It's about 90% gone now. Um, but you have to look out for little things like this. Can you see these tiny little white bits? These are going to be scale. These are scale babies. You think, oh, it's just a bit of fluff on the tree. But they will grow into scale. So it's important to try and uh, nip this problem in the bud. Because if you get a really bad infestation, you will start to lose trees. And it spreads from tree to tree so quickly. Um, the other thing uh, to look out for are aphids. Now, a telltale sign of an aphid problem is not only the fact that you can see them on the back of the leaves, um, but also you'll see ants crawling up the trees. Now, ants rather like farming themselves, so they set up aphid farms on the leaves of the tree. So if you see a line of ants going up your tree, follow them, look where they're going, and you'll see where you've got an aphid problem. So again, the aphids are sucking on the leaves on the tree, and taking all the goodness from the tree and then the ants come and eat the secretion from the aphids. So again, it's really important to, um, to get on top of that quite quickly. The good thing about horticultural oil is apart from the fact that it's environmentally friendly and quite a lot cheaper than a lot of other um, chemical options, um, is that it will kill anything that is soft bodied. So it will do the scale, it will do the aphids, um, and you can also have a go at the ants as well. The other thing that's very good for ants is diatomaceous earth. So sometimes we will see, I think you can see on this tree over here, we've got some diatomaceous earth around the bottom of the tree. Um, and as the ants crawl through it, uh, it basically melts them. But again, it's a good environmentally friendly option. Um, so when we're spraying a tree, how do I approach it? Um, Tip number one, this is really important. When you're working inside the trees, wear a silly hat. There is nothing worse than having ants crawling through your hair. It's really not pleasant. Learned that one very, very early on. So usually I will start by coming inside into the center of the trees and spraying everywhere that I can on this inside part tend to find that most insects will actually be in this middle section. Uh, it's obviously calmer in here, they're less bothered by any weather, so this is a good place to start. So I come inside and do the inside of the tree, all up everywhere, and then I'll come to the outside of the tree and work my way around it. Um, I've just found that this is the best method, I get the best coverage without getting soaking wet myself. Um, another really important thing when you're looking after trees is to make sure that any pruners or shears that you're using are clean. If a tree has got a disease, um, using the same pair of pruners, so I'll come here and I'll lop off another water shoot. If I now go to another tree and do the same without cleaning these in between, it's very easy to spread diseases from tree to tree. So we use a uh, very simple alcohol spray. Um, if you haven't got any of this or you can't find it anywhere, um, you can simply, I don't know, buy a bit of cheap vodka or something. Um, but as long as you're cleaning those in between trees, then, then that's a really good thing to do. Um, another problem that uh, trees can have are fungus problems. Now we've learnt this the hard way this year, we've actually lost our apricot tree, we had no idea. It was fine one day and then literally went Ugh, and it was dead and it was about a week before the apricot harvest, we were absolutely devastated. When we cleared away we found that all around the bottom of the tree were lots and lots of little mushrooms and toadstools. So the, the, there is a fungus that apricots are prone to that actually attack the roots. So literally one day we had a healthy tree and the next day you could rock it in the ground. So we've had no option but to cut that one down and we've just left ourselves a stump there at the moment. Very handy for locking the motorbikes too. Um, so, you know, we've learned a lot of these things the hard way. So what can you do about fungus problems? There is a, a natural substance, uh, sulfur powder. Now it's a bit evil to use. Uh, you, when I'm spraying horticultural oil, um, it doesn't affect humans, it doesn't affect animals, it's great when the dogs are running around. So I'll just be out in shorts and a t-shirt with my hat on and everything's good. When it comes to the sulphur powder, 
Um, it's overalls, top to toe. It's a mask on. It's glass safety glasses on, and a hat on. And you still come in, and your eyes are red raw. It's horrible stuff to use. But uh, we use it in a backpack, and it just has a puffer. So you have a little handle that, when you move the handle up and down, it puffs out some sulphur powder out of the end. So we use those on the vines and all of the trees. It's really good for keeping fungus problems down. The benefit obviously of using things like sulphur is that again it's ecological because it's natural. The downside of using ecological things is you have to use them a lot more often. So if we were to use uh, a chemical insecticide and fungicide three or four times a year would be fine. Using uh, natural ones uh, it's probably every three to four weeks. Um, but it's not a problem, we've got, we've got it down pat now, we do it in two halves. So I'll do the first terrace and half of the second terrace on one day and then the next day do the other half of the second terrace and the third terrace. Um, because obviously here the problem we have is it gets so hot, a terrible problem to have. Um, so what we don't want to be doing is spraying uh, during a really hot sun um, because then you're going to burn the leaves of the tree. So we get up early in the morning, do an hour or so before the heat sets in, and then we can either finish later in the evening as it cools down or go again the next morning. Um, so we find that's the best way. So when you're looking at problems with your trees, you've got to look for more than one sign. When it comes to watering, this totally perplexed us at the beginning. We use a drip irrigation system. So you can see here that we have these uh, pipes running all the way around the farm and they have nozzles on them. Now our drip irrigation system isn't ideal. In an ideal world each tree would have a big circle of pipe around it with nozzles at regular intervals so that the tree is being watered around as a whole. I don't think our water pressure is high enough to get around the whole farm doing that. We have sectioned the farm off um, so we can actually go right we're going to water the first terrace or we're just going to do the second terrace. Um, but even then, I mean, our water pressure is 10 bar and it still wouldn't be enough to push it around if we had too many nozzles. So what we tend to do is put the irrigation on as we go to bed at night and leave it on all night and then just come get up in the morning and turn it off. So how can you tell if a tree needs watering? Um, like I say, signs like leaf curl will tell you, but leaf curl could be too much or not enough water. Leaves going yellow, it could be too much or not enough water. So we were sitting there going, help, how do I know which one it is? Do I need to water them or do I need to leave them for a week? So it's a very, very simple trick for knowing whether a tree needs water or not. Let me show you this leaf here. Can you see this leaf has started to fold up? That means it needs water. It's as simple as that. When your leaves are nice and flat, they don't need water. If you do that with a leaf and it crinkles, it needs water. So there's lots of ways and it seems so obvious now, but when we first moved here, we were like, oh my God, we don't know what we're doing with the trees. So you can have a look at a tree and on here, you can see most of the leaves are actually perfectly happy. There's the odd one that's starting to curl. This means that we will need to water in the next couple of days. Um, but you don't want to go too early on watering because overwatering is as bad as underwatering. So my last thing about looking after the trees, it's really important, sorry I'm under a tree at the moment, it's really important to clear up after you've pruned. So where I've cut these water shoots off, before I move on to another tree, these will get picked up. And that's especially important if you are pruning to get rid of some disease or pests. They do say that the most effective way to get rid of pests out of trees is to actually go and hand pick the insects off and remove any diseased or infected leaves. So the last thing you wanna do is throw those on the ground, walk away, have a nice cup of tea, and just leave them there because obviously the pests are just gonna go straight back up the tree again. So in an orchard, cleanliness is, is really, really important. Clean any tools that you're going to use so that you're not infecting one tree to another. Pick up after yourself when you finish pruning and just keep an eye on them, look at them. Make sure that the sun can get in, that the air can get through. If you leave your tree to overgrow, 
you will still get fruit but it will be small and it won't be at all impressive and it won't be very juicy so the idea is you have maybe slightly less fruit but it's a brilliant quality and that's what you want at the end of the day so we did a massive cut on the trees uh, in the spring. So we're actually not going to get very many oranges this year. And that's fine. Sometimes you just have to take the hit. I'm going to show you one other tree. Uh, just come around the corner here. And this is a mandarin tree. Now I did a blog on this uh, a couple of months ago that we did a skeleton cut. So we actually chopped it down until it was just a few bare trunks, the trunk and the branches here. And in just a couple of short months, can you see how the tree has pushed to recover? So doing a skeleton cut, it's a bit scary. It looks like you've killed your tree, but actually it's like pushing a reset button. So we will start to prune this down slightly now. A tree, the first thing it wants to do is cover its trunk to protect it from the sun. So we won't take everything off from the middle. We'll wait now until the canopy has started to extend over the top so that the trunk will still be protected. But then we can start to shape it there in the middle so that the sun and the air can get through. So that's what we've learned so far about trees. Um, Look at them regularly. Don't just walk past them. Have a look. Look for signs of insects. Have a look for signs of disease. Uh, check the leaves to see if they need watering. And also fertiliser is important. A couple of times a year we'll go and buy granular fertiliser. Um, and it was quite funny when we first did it. We read that we needed to very carefully measure it out per tree and place it at the edge of the canopy in a circle around the tree. And at the time our builder was here and he sort of came up to us and said, what on earth are you doing? And we went, well, we're putting the fertilizer around the trees. So he picked up a scoop, put it in the bag, threw it up in the middle of the tree. And as it came down, it spread beautifully all around the bottom of the tree, the whole, around the whole canopy. So what was taking us a day to do now takes us about half an hour. And that's to do all of the trees. But um, the granular one's very good. It then gets just watered in um, as we water the trees. And if we get a bit of rain, that's absolutely perfect. So a couple of times a year for some fertilizer, look out for insects, look out for um, disease such as fungus diseases. Um, you'll see that on the leaves and on the fruit. Um, and tackle it straight away. Whatever you do, don't be tempted to leave a problem because it will become an enormous problem very, very quickly on a fruit tree. So I hope you've enjoyed our little tour of our one of our lovely orange trees. As you can see, I do like to have some wind chimes under here. It's lovely sitting indoors in, in the evening listening to those go. Um, so I hope that's been helpful. Thank you for joining us again and hopefully we'll see you again soon. So from a very hot and sunny Finca del Cielo, have a lovely rest of the day and I'll see you soon. Bye.